Okay, I'm gonna try something that I've never tried before. So play with me here, okay. Has anyone here had a magical, life-affirming moment on a mountain? Raise your hand. Okay, so I lost a bet, so we're gonna do it. Start the slow clap with me if you know what it feels like to be waiting for that powder day. And here it is, today's the day. Two feet of fresh. You waited for this moment for weeks and you have been waiting in line and you've been, and you, now all your friends are with you on the chair and then you get off the chair and this two feet of fresh is all yours and it's you and all your friends zooming down a powder field, feeling the wind in your face, giggling, mouth full of snow, what would you do if you could do anything? And then you can barely see, your legs are burning, and then you hit an air. Oh my God, you never would have hit that air if you knew you were gonna do it, but there you did it, and you landed, and you're skiing away, and you look back and you're like, woo, I'm the king of the world, I can do anything. You know that feeling? <laughs> do you really? Do you know it? You wouldn't be here if you didn't know it. I know you know it. And that feeling is the thing that made me, as a young girl, want to dedicate my life to more of those experiences. And it's also that feeling that I wanted to give other little girls that might not have the opportunities that I did. So here comes my, my next disclaimer. Um, I totally scrapped my whole speech <laughs> and uh, rewrote it in the last 24 hours. So. I am going to do a bit of reading, um, but with that, I can tell you that this is not canned. I've never said it to anyone else, and it's real. So here we go. Ah, that was so fun. Did you feel it? We weren't inside for like a minute there. <clears throat> over, the, over the next decade, women will control two-thirds of consumer wealth in the United States and be the beneficiaries of the largest transference, transference of wealth in our country's history. Women are more educated than ever, have a higher income, and make 85% of all household purchasing decisions, including everything from vacation choices to sports apparel, even on the men's side. They make up at least 40% of all major sports fans, from basketball to football, even car racing, and the snow sports industry is the same. This segment is the most underrated, especially by ourselves, and I'll explain that later, yet one of the fastest growing demographics in the sports industry, and you guys probably all know this. 41% of Facebook users who list surf, skate, and snow are female. Yet 91% of women in one survey said that advertisers don't understand them, and in our industry, only 13% of athletes in ski films are female. This is a jump, but the figure corresponds to the fact that in business, only four out of 10 women hold senior management positions, and only 17% hold high-level political positions at the government level. The point is, we are out of balance in every industry across the board, and we're missing our fullest opportunity to connect with the growing female market. For the record, I'm not just suggesting we fill some minority quota just to, just to fill a quota and finding the best person for the job from ski athlete to CEO is, is something I believe in, male or female. But I am hoping that this talk inspires women to take more risks, even if that role seems over their head and in their own eyes, as well as encouraging the men in leadership roles to invite those ladies to step up to bigger risks, both on and off the hill. So how do we speak to this rising market as well as continue to empower the next generation into the outdoors? I believe the solutions include changing the advertising game by showcasing modern real icons in media that redefine typical female roles, offering girls something greater to aspire to than they're used to. This includes us. We're starting to do such a great job at showcasing aspirational images of women getting after it on the hill instead of standing around looking hot or just shopping with the kids in the village. If we don't keep this up, the ladies won't know that they belong out here too, and that it's what our bodies can do over what our bodies look like that matters. Another solution includes creating the invitation for adventure by encouraging pushing one's limits and celebrating imperfection. And the third thing I've found to bring us back to balance and increase the participation of women in our sport is to start early by making the outdoors a magical and affordable place for young girls to discover themselves on a mountain we will continue to create the lifelong empowered consumers of the great outdoors. 
To illustrate the need for new role models, I'd like to start with a story, and it's actually a puzzle. A young boy is involved in a traffic accident and is immediately rushed to the hospital for urgent surgery. In the bustle and the chaos of the hospital environment, the surgeon strides into the operating room brimming with confidence and authority, a true A-type personality, one who knows instinctively how to take charge. Yet this distinguished surgeon looks down at the boy and gasps, I can't operate on this boy. This boy is my son. True, the boy is the surgeon's son. Yet the surgeon is not the boy's father. Who then is the surgeon? Oh, you guys got it. <clears throat> I did not get this. For the longest time, I'm like, uh, grandfather, stepfather, uncle. Yeah. The surgeon is a she. She is the boy's mother. Yet plenty of even empowered women, myself included, didn't get that at first. Unfortunately, until we change the pictures burned into our subconscious about what a powerful woman looks like, we will not change and live up to the leadership opportunities that are around us everywhere. The same goes for politics. A new study published in Popular Science found that looking at images of female role models, in this case a picture of Hillary Clinton, made women better public speakers while giving a political speech. With this in mind, I made a ski movie, and we're about to see a clip, to showcase women performing at the highest level in order to inspire more women into the mountains, to show them that they belonged here too. People told me no one would watch it, but we sold out over 100 shows, 150 shows and counting, and had to reprint DVDs even this week for the third time. I didn't even think people bought DVDs anymore. <laughs> so here's a little clip from that. The next thing, oh, thank you. So the second thing I believe females need in order to increase our participation is an invitation. We need to both inspire and push women to go beyond their comfort zones, even if they aren't so sure themselves. I co-founded a nonprofit called She Jumps that was created to get more females participating in the outdoors. And one thing we find over and over is that more often than not, women are intimidated to go on the hill with their husbands or boyfriends or try that no new trick or step up to that big line. I've been one of them. Stating they don't want to hold the group up, they don't want to look stupid, they don't want to feel dumb asking those questions. So they just don't try. But it's not because we don't want to. I found study after study that show that we as women consistently underestimate our own abilities, particularly due to our chemical makeup, while men consistently overestimate theirs. <laughs> and estrogen and testosterone have something to do with that, but that's a whole other talk. The other thing I found is that many women, not all, but many feel confident only when they feel like they are perfect or practically perfect. And so we wait to be perfect, and I felt like I had to do that before I could step up to this film, and it took me 12 years to get the balls. Hewlett Packard discovered this several years ago when it was trying to figure out how to get more women into top management positions. They found that women applied for a promotion only when they believed they met 100% of the qualifications listed for the job. Men were happy to apply when they thought they could meet 60% of the job requirements. Bottom line is women aren't stepping up and taking the risk until they feel perfect and it's holding us back across the board. Another study showcasing that women could benefit from being pushed was illustrated in an experiment where students were offered a challenge to solve a series of spatial puzzles. The women scored measurably worse than the men did, but when researchers looked at the results more closely, they found that the women had done poorly because they hadn't even attempted to answer a lot of the questions. So they repeated the experiment, this time telling the students they had to at least try to solve all the puzzles. And guess what? The women's scores increased sharply, matching and in some cases beating the men's. This work illustrates a key point that when we as women take a risk, even if it's because we are forced to, we tend to perform just as well as men. If we as an industry know this, that, then know that women tend to feel this way, we can create the invitation that women are looking for and need to have in order to experience more of those magical moments that the mountains offer. Help us lighten up. Help us laugh at ourselves and celebrate imperfection. That's why I made shit skier girls say that I think some of you saw earlier today. It's up to over half a million views. The last thing I believe that will help us tap more into, female, into the female market is to start them early and make it magic. If we can introduce this wonderful world of the outdoors to a girl at a young age and get her hooked at two years old, three, and four, studies show there's a good chance she'll be a lifelong consumer. But how do we speak to little girls the way they need to be spoken to? 
girls' brains are activated more greatly than boys by a chemical called oxytocin, which appreciates color and texture and touch and encourages bonding and connection. Girls also use an average of twice the verbal centers in their brain than boys do. They rely on words. That's why we all talk more than the guys. <laughs> a dad came up to me the other week excited to share his story. He'd been having trouble getting his three-year-old to want to go skiing until he found a solution after watching our film. He showed up wearing a giant purple dinosaur in costume and invited his daughter to go ski with Daddy Dinosaur. For the first time, she didn't want to go in and skied with him for the whole afternoon. I'll leave you now with a clip that I think illustrates that invitation that so many of us young girls got from our dads. And if we could get more of these invitations from other leaders, both men and women, in, as young and old girls, we could take over, not take over the world, but we could at least step up to our ultimate potential. Thank you, and I'll leave you with that clip. <laughs>